In this lesson, we're going to go over the back burner, back burner monitor, as well as being able to monitor how our jobs are doing and be able to control them in the farm. So first off, going to go to Programs, Autodesk Applications, Creation Suite 2015, Back Burner, Monitor. All right, and this opens up this little box over here. Uh, straight off the bat, we'll see that there's nothing loaded in our view. This is because we're not connected to the manager. The manager is the computer that controls all the renders. So in order to be able to get to that, up here in the left-hand corner, we've got this little green connect button. Just going to go ahead and click that. And under the manager name, going to go ahead and make sure that that's set to bhclab underscore zero zero. Again, that's the computer that controls the farm. So we'll just go ahead and click OK. Fantastic. All right, so in here we'll see that we've got our two jobs from earlier. If we expand this out, we can see we've got our Maya software and our mental ray render ready to go. We've got an order to see which ones are going to be rendered first, the priority, and their state. Currently, they're set to suspended because we wanted to make sure that we manually started them. And we've got a progress bar and our owner. Currently, it's set to Darwin because I'm working on that profile at the moment. However, uh, this should be your username whenever you send jobs to the farm. All right, so if I go ahead and click on either one of these jobs, I'll click this first one. On the right hand side here, we've got a list of all the information about those jobs. Uh, we've got the name, the description, where it's going, who's it being come from, all that lovely stuff. Mostly you can ignore this, but on the second tab here called task summary, we can see how many jobs and tasks are being distributed out to all the frames. We'll see here that my task size at, is at 24 frames. So that means that 24 frames are going to be sent to each computer that receives a task from this job. Under job details, we don't have anything because it's a Maya software render. Um, if it were something from 3ds Max, you would have more information here. But since it's Maya, it eh, doesn't work for us. And over here on this last tab, we've got our errors section. In a perfect world, we never get any errors. But, well, it's not a perfect world, so we'll cover errors in the next video. So, at the bottom here, we've got a list of all the computers that are able to be connected to the farm. You'll notice that a, quite a few of these are absent. This is because people are signed into those computers. If people are signed into them, they're disconnected to the farm so that, well, we don't crash their computers with how much rendering we're sending to them while they're trying to work, because we like to be nice like that. Sometimes, anyways. Anywho, so... In order to be able to start a job, I'm just going to go up here, and on these menu bars up here, there's a little green button that says Activate Job. I'm going to go ahead and click that, and we should see that jobs start being assigned to the computers down here, just like so. So we can see that we've got various lab computers that are now accepting these jobs and starting to render them. Wonderful. So if I go over to my project folder now, even on the Z drive, this should still work. So if we go to images, we can see that my folder has popped open that we designated for this and files are starting to be rendered. Fantastic. So we'll just leave this to it and go ahead and start my other job as well. You can have multiple jobs being submitted to the farm at any given point in time. You'll see that all these are actually popping in now as well. So we'll have many jobs that are being rendered at the same time benefits of having the farm. They'll be distributed between all the different farm computers at any given point in time. And we'll just leave it be. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video for now until this is done. All right, there we go. We can see that all of our jobs have been marked off as complete. If we go into the task summary, we see that all of them have been completed. A bit of a variance in the time there, mostly just based on the fact that it was a render on the network. So the network slows down occasionally, speeds up because people are logging in, doing all sorts of crazy stuff on the network. So it tends to vary a little bit. But overall, it's a lot faster than it would have been to do it individually on each hand computer. So once we've got this done, we can go over to our images folder and we'll see that we have both folders set in. We've got our mental ray textures as EXRs. We would have to open these up in Premiere or After Effects to see how they look. And we also have our JPEGs from Maya software. We can see that a couple of them have the texture blacked out. This is again just a small error that we'll be covering over in the next video where some uh, 
nodes on the network do not necessarily pick up all the textures, just requires a re-render. But otherwise we can open up these and we'll see that we've got a nice quick texture rendered out very quickly on the farm and it's all located just in our images folder. So from here at this point, we would want to download these two folders onto our local computer to bring into Premiere. We don't want to open these over the network in Premiere or After Effects just because a network connection is slower than a hard disk connection. And sometimes Adobe products will wig out when they see that a file isn't opening as fast as it thinks it should. So just download them onto your local uh, hard drive and you can start adding them into Premiere. That's pretty much the entire process at this point. A couple things to cover here. Um, once we finish our jobs, we want to select both of them. And if we know that we're done with them, we don't want to have to deal with them anymore. We right click on them and go to archive job. This will uh, put them into the job archives. We'll just refresh this a second. We can see that it clears it out from our list here. If we go over to job, job archives, we can take a look at all the jobs that have ever been submitted to the farm. So this just allows us to be able to go back and take a look at them if we ever need to bring them back. We can see that we've got my files, a whole bunch of other files. If we ever want to look at the settings again or see if there was an error in them for some reason, we would be able to go back and either refresh, activate, or delete these files, just to be able to bring them back into our farm settings. And with that, that is pretty much it. Over the next lesson, I'll just go over a couple error codes and how to quickly fix them. But other than that, that is the farm. Welcome to the Barrett Render Farm. See you in the next lesson.